Welcome to another episode of Hardcat Basics. In this episode, we're going to focus on how to create a new asset in the Hardcat system. Before we go into the process of creating an actual asset record in the Hardcat system, let's first of all go through some of the details about what we can store against an asset. In general, Hardcat has the ability to record practically any information you want about an asset through the use of the Hardcat entity relationships. Remembering the entities are asset types, products, cost centers, people, suppliers, and locations, as well as the presets which are inherited from the asset type. Apart from having the ability to associate your asset to the other six entities, an asset also has the following attributes. Asset code, a unique system code generated automatically by Hardcat. This is the unique primary key for the Hardcat system. Once this code is generated, you cannot change this code. It resides with the asset for the life of the asset. Every asset also has a barcode field, which can be a physical label or tag which you attach to the asset. The barcode field can be changed over the life of the asset. This is also a required field. The asset also has a serial number, a product, an asset status, which can be indicative of active, inactive, disposed, and this can be customized. Also, assets have financial information of purchase details, invoice numbers, lease information, warrant information, and end of life. When generating an asset, the minimum requirements are asset code, barcode, asset type, and asset description. Other attributes that can be captured against an asset include more text. This is an area they can write in a free text value, such as extract from emails or minor notes taken. Each asset has the ability to capture additional costs. This could be operational costs of an asset or ad hoc labor parts, service costs, which will automatically populate from work orders and help desk requests. Each asset also has the ability to attach files, and they can be any type of file, which could be a file, a photo, a PDF, a map, an invoice, or service manuals for the asset. Through the help desk and maintenance module on, on the asset, you can see the full service history of any asset. You also can create a new work order or a help desk request directly from the asset itself. Each asset has the ability to create a parent-child relationship to show your relationships between assets, either the being a server rack and showing the server as a part of the rack, or it could be a vehicle and all the parts that make up the vehicle, including radios, first aid kits, fire extinguishers. Another powerful feature of Hardcat is its logging ability. Hardcat will save the date, the time, the user, how that action occurred, the field that was changed, whilst recording what the old value was to what the new value is. When configuring the Hardcat system, Hardcat allows the creation of user keys against each of your entities. Against the asset entity, Hardcat allows you to create three sets of user keys, two free text fields, two currency fields, and two date-based fields. These fields are quite useful and they can be included in reports and also can be easily searched upon. The final attribute I want to talk about before we look at an asset record is the assets preset class. The asset preset class is inherited automatically from an asset's asset type relationship. An asset preset class allows you to ask up to an extra thousand questions per asset. The questions can be used to define the attributes of that specific type of asset. In the example we have on screen here, we have laptops. Against a laptop, you may want to ask the questions of CPU speed, hard disk size, operating system, and maybe software licenses. Whereas against a vehicle, you may want to track fuel capacity, transmission type, engine size, year, VIN number. Mobile phones, you may want to track IME numbers, phone numbers, and other associated attributes where the preset class allows you to do this and it'll fall through automatically. Currently the type of responses a preset class can have can be one of two options, either a free text response or a predetermined drop-down list value. To create a new asset in Hardcat, we first of all have to navigate to the asset grid screen. This can be completed in one of three ways. First of all, by clicking on the asset icon on the main menu. Alternatively, you could click on the list menu and assets, or if you like keyboard shortcuts, control A. Now that we are presented with our asset grid screen, we have two options for creating a new asset. The first being the new button. By pressing the new button, this allows us to create a brand new asset record and filling out all the details from top to bottom. Whereas the copy button, if we were to select an existing record and go copy, that will copy the assets attributes whilst giving us a new asset code and barcode based on the asset that we pressed copy on. In this example, I'm going to create a new asset by using the new asset button. 
As by pressing the new button, we're presented with a new asset record screen. You'll notice that Hardcat has already pre-assigned an asset code. This code cannot be changed from this time forward. You can always cancel the asset and press new to get another code, but once you press OK to save the record, that asset code resides with the asset for the life of the asset. Hardcat has provided you with a predetermined barcode field. You can always change this value if you'd like. Remembering the value still has to be a unique value though. You can enter a serial number. You could enter an RFID field. You also may enter a product. By selecting a product, in this example I'm going to create a new laptop. The laptop being a IBM ThinkPad 600E Pentium 2 366 laptop. By selecting this record, it pre-populates for me my asset type and my description, saving me additional data entry requirements. Then working further down the page, we can specify the status, we can specify the PO number, we can specify the supplier's invoice number, we can say where is this asset located. Again, all using the existing structures that we have within the Hardcat system. Who did we buy it from? We bought it from Mega Computers. What person is using the asset? This asset is used via Dandrum. And finally, which cost center is responsible for the cost of this asset? This going against the IT cost center. If we wanted to, we can populate our user keys at the bottom, being ERA2 code and batch number. Also, next test date and last test date. The fields not shown here are two currency fields as these are not being populated. Onto the finance tab, we can enter a purchase price for the asset. We, we bought this asset for $1,500 and we purchased it today. The current value will be automatically worked out for you based on the depreciation rate of the asset through the depreciation module if you have this module enabled. You also can put in an insurance value and a replacement value. If you populate the insurance and replacement value, Hardcat can work out an insurance gap value for you. The warranty end date field and the end of life date field will be automatically assigned to this asset once I press OK, based around the asset type's life and the product's warranty period. If this asset was not an owned asset, but it could be potentially a leased asset, you could change the finance dropdown to select one of these other options, being leased, rented or higher purchased. The options within this list can be enhanced through further options through the Hardcat Global Options settings. If you choose another option apart from owned, you have the ability to enter a from date and to date, which you can then report on, also capturing a lease reference number and a cost per year, month, quarter or copy. If the asset you are creating has preset questions, they will be automatically applied within the preset tab here. As you can see, the asset type laptop has the preset class desktops laptops assigned to it. Here I can go through and populate these questions as necessary. I can choose from drop down menus although these questions aren't a required field to create an asset. Further on we have the Files tab, although you can't save a file to an asset until the record has been saved. We have the Maintenance tab, where we can track, where we can track the maintenance start date and end date for a maintenance contract. We can record the maintenance reference number. We can record what condition this asset is in. We can record who is the default maintainer for this asset. It may be Mega Computers or it could be GTC Computers. We can record this asset has a 24-7 service level and what date did it get installed into the production. If this asset has attachments, if we were to buy a printer with this laptop or if we were to buy enhancements to the asset, for example we could have bought an SSD hard drive, extra RAM, a monitor. If these assets were additional records in the Hardcat Asset Management System, using the edit button we could make the relationship. The Problems tab over the life of the asset will show us all the help desk problems that are raised against this asset. By default, only the active problems are shown. From this screen, if you have the help desk module enabled, you can press the New button to raise a new problem record for this asset. You also may enter see any stock that's associated with this asset and any work orders. I'm now going to save this record by pressing OK. And here is my record. If I open this record up again now, I can go and assign a file. I can create attachments. So now I can apply this printer as an attachment to this record. I can create problems against this asset. I can create work orders against this asset. As you can see, there is a massive amount of information that can be recorded against an asset. The only requirement to creating an asset is asset code, barcode, asset type and description. Once those four fields are populated, 
all the other fields that we have seen on this asset record come down to the business requirements of your organization. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this episode of Hard Cap Basics. If you have any other questions about anything you've seen in this episode, please don't hesitate to contact Hardcat support.